What is it about this college game that has brought Bill Walsh back to the sideline? What is it that makes a three-time Super Bowl winner come back? What goes through his mind as he watches his Stanford team prepare? Does he have the plan, the play, to produce an unthinkable upset? Can Bill Walsh add to his coaching legend and beat Notre Dame? This is Notre Dame Saturday with your hosts, Hannah Storm and Jim Lampley. Notre Dame, Indiana, site of today's game between the 18th rated Stanford Cardinal and the unbeaten and sixth ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. On a sunny afternoon in South Bend, Indiana, the 18th-ranked Stanford Cardinal takes the field, led by one of the game's top coaches, Bill Walsh, winner of three Super Bowls as coach of the 49ers. Of course, his last appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium was just under a year ago as an NBC commentator on Irish games. Bill Walsh never expected to be back here in this stadium as a coach, but ironically, his association with the Notre Dame coaches and players last year helped bring him back to the college coaching ranks. In fact, Walsh says without the contact with the Notre Dame players and other players from the teams that visited here last season, he may never have gotten back to college coaching. And here's the other half of the coaching equation, another giant of the game, Lou Holtz, preparing to lead his sixth rank Fighting Irish onto the field. This game matches not only two top 20 teams, the two teams that rank among the elite in college football, Notre Dame offensively and Stanford defensively. But the two coaches, Walsh and Holtz, have occupied pregame attention, and the Irish take the field. gorgeous Indian summer afternoon in South Bend, Indiana, with game time temperatures in the mid-70s. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth. You know, Chris, rarely does a matchup between two top 20 teams become overshadowed by personalities, but in this case, all the attention has gone to the coaches, Walsh and Holtz. What do you think the game really means to them? Well, Bill Walsh says that this is just another football game. I'm not sure that I buy that. Anytime two top caliber coaches get together, you know that they want to get after each other. But Lou Holtz, on the other hand, was much more open. He said at times Bill Walsh embarrassed him during broadcast on NBC last year. So you've got to know that he would like nothing better than to turn the tables here this afternoon. You know, it's one of those classic matchups, though, on the field. Notre Dame with the nation's best offense. Stanford with a second-ranked defense. What do you expect? I think the first quarter is going to be the key. If Notre Dame great rushing attack can move the football on the ground against this number two ranked Stanford defense you're going to see Notre Dame have a lot of success if not I really look for the Cardinals to have a chance to win this ball game through all the pregame hoopla John dockery has been uh, keeping an eye on Bill Walsh and the Stanford team Doc what have you found out you know Tom I've been doing exactly that I followed Walsh around pretty much between the pregame he was generally relaxed came out signed a few autographs said hello to a few people spent some time with his quarterback Stenstrom and Butterfield told me yesterday we would probably see Butterfield Field. But the thing that startled me most about the pregame, about the warm-up, was something that did not happen. Normally, coaches get together with one another. They talk a little bit. They shake hands. Bill Walsh, Lou Holtz never came within 10 yards of one another, never shook hands. And that, to me, speaks volumes, guys. Back to you, Tom. I think you're right, John. I think it tells us exactly how the coaches really feel about the game. The first quarter could be very important to the outcome today. Stanford has not allowed a point in the initial period, while the Irish are 42 to 10 in the opening quarter. This Heisman Trophy moment is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. As an all-around athlete, Notre Dame's Johnny Latner had few peers. Latner's outstanding versatility made him an All-American on both offense and defense. At Notre Dame, Latner played for Frank Leahy, who once told Latner to repent five mortal sins after Latner had fumbled five times against Purdue. 
After repenting, Latner went on to his Heisman Trophy moment. Most people know State Farm sells car and homeowner's insurance. Some people don't know State Farm sells life insurance, too. I'm State Farm agent Cecil Burt. Our life insurance policies, our prices, and our financial ability to deliver on our promises, plus the good neighbor service State Farm agents are famous for, have made State Farm one of the largest of all life insurance companies and an outstanding life insurance value. State Farm sells life insurance. you can carry is accepted in more places and in more ways Food. at home and abroad okay. I got it then MasterCard it's the only card you need rooms MasterCard not a bad day's work master the moment Wednesday it's every parent's nightmare when your daughter's jilted boyfriend returns for revenge what if it were your daughter? Share the outrage when he outwits the courts. I'll take my chances with the jury. USA Today calls it miles above the best. Objection. A must-see Law & Order NBC Wednesday. The quarterback Stenstrom has a bruised chest. He really couldn't throw in practice this week, but is hitting 60% of his passes. The Cardinal has a Heisman candidate in its backfield, Glenn Milburn, second in the nation behind Marshall Falk in all-purpose yards. Cook is Stanford's leading receiver. And on the offensive line, left tackle has been a revolving door for Stanford. 310-pound Jeff Bailey starting there today. Stenstrom to pass on first down is sacked. Loose ball. Irish. Demetrius DeBose, the All-American linebacker, hitting Stenstrom. Is it a Notre Dame touchdown? Yes. No, a safety, a safety. So Stanford recovers in its own end zone. The first play from scrimmage for Bill Walsh results in a safety as Demetrius DeBose knocks the ball loose from Steve Stenstrom. Right off the bat, you see the problems that Stanford has had with that left side. Demetrius DeBose comes around the right side and does not even get blocked. And that is just absolute death for Steve Stenstrom as the Cardinal has found the absolute worst way to open this ball game. So here's Rick Meyer hitting less than 50% of his passes, but he needs only one aerial TD to set the Notre Dame record. This is the Heisman backfield. Meyer, Bettis, and now Brooks, who's averaging over 10 yards a carry, have all been mentioned for the honor. Dawson, the top receiver, and the offensive line keep your eye on Taylor and Hall. Stanford up front with Avia, the best defensive lineman. The Stars, though, the outside backers. George, who has seven sacks, and Garnett, who leads the team in tackles. In the secondary, they'll play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Gordon and Bryant, two former wide receivers, are good cover men. The high formation in the backfield on third down. Meyer under pressure. Nice catch made by Miller. And Mike Miller has a first down into Stanford territory. Knocked out of bounds. The 35-yard line after an 18-yard game. In the eye with two wides to the right. And Bettis up the middle, bouncing off tacklers, driving his way inside the 25. Maybe a face mask as well as Bettis has another Irish first down. That's what it takes from time to time. You can't tackle him high, you can't tackle him low. You just grab that face mask and try and pull him down any way that you can. Bettis with the quick face trap mask. right up the middle. And you'll see the face mask right at the end of the play, just grabbing for anything to try and bring Bettis to the turf. That's Toby Norwood, but uh, even that didn't stop Jerome Bettis. He just kept plowing ahead. Bettis had a monster game against the Cardinal last year, rushing for 179 yards and four touchdowns. Field Bettis the fullback, Brooks the tailback. Brooks. 
six, three yards to the 12. Brooks, as we mentioned earlier, averaging over 10 yards a carry, comes off his career best 205 yard performance against Purdue, seventh best in Irish history. Modern success stopping the run. Here's the option, and a pitch to Brooks. It's wide open. Brooks walks in for the touchdown. George coming out of the right side of your screen. He is going to come right after Rick Meyer and try to make a play. And there was absolutely no one left to cover Reggie Brooks. Reggie Brooks, who had three touchdowns a week ago, gets number seven on the season. Notre Dame, nine, zip. Stenstrom has time. Finally finds his receiver for a first down. Justin Armour, the converted quarterback who plays wide out now for the Cardinal, takes it for a gain of 17 and the initial Stanford first down. Stanford with a first down. And again, they will go to the air. Stenstrom with a intended screen pass, I think, complete to Lashley, but the blocking broke down and Notre Dame is able to stop it after a gain of only about three yards. It's human beings. Irish in front nine, nothing, first quarter. Formation overloaded to the right here. Receivers heading every which way. Stenstrom with a flag down and a nice catch made in traffic. It was wet night the tight end, and Covington was wrapped all over him, but it could be a holding call on Stanford. Holding. And here at Notre Dame, it's 9-0 Irish over Stanford after a safety and a touchdown drive. Stenstrom chased from the pocket. Throws back across the field to Lashley. Lashley trying to put on some moves. Can't make the 35-yard line. Demetrius Dubose all over the field. Tracks down Lashley. He's getting hit like that. It may be sooner rather than later. Here's the punt by Stonehouse. Miller hit immediately at the 40-yard line. Good coverage by the Stanford special teams. But a short kick, only 26 yards on the punt by Stonehouse. It's been all Notre Dame. One, so he's having one tremendous year. Bill Walsh thinks he was a definite All-American candidate. Meyer setting up a screen, complete to Bennis. Gets a beautiful block. Bennis into Stanford territory to the 43-yard line. One of the things that Stanford really likes to do defensively is put pressure on the quarterback. So what you have seen are the, is the option game, the screen passes, the draws, all the things to try to slow down that pass rush, and they've been very effective thus far. He's going to be making an appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium later in the season. Meyer throws into a crowd and too high for the intended receiver. It'll be... Incomplete as Lake Dawson took a pretty good blow, too, from John Lynch to free safety. Being strung out over the middle, John Lynch right in the rib cage. Tom, I, <laughs> you can tell me about it, huh? That's what keeps you up late at night when you're a wide receiver, those crossing routes. And look at Lake Dawson. Walsh has the first 25 plays on offense scripted before he comes to the stadium. This is Melbourne in motion. Stenstrom. Dangerous pass. They got away with it. Complete to Cook. Cook made a catch in traffic. It'll be close to another first down. They'll mark it just a yard short. Notre Dame stacked up front to stop an expected run, and it is a run and a fumble. I believe Stanford got it back, and it will be a first down. Footwork as a problem early, and Joe Montana, of all people, the former Notre Dame player, came in to help him with his footwork in the passing game. That one is complete. Good footwork by he and his receiver, Mike Cook, who gets a foot down in bounds into Irish territory for the first time today. If he has it in his foot, because even if it fails, you can always come back and go for it on fourth down. Heavy load formation includes the 250-pound Olsen in the backfield. The gift straight ahead and a first down by Roberts and then some. Ellery Roberts pounding straight ahead, finally stopped by Tom Carter as Walsh picks up a key first down to the right in the backfield. High formation with Milburn. And again, again to Roberts, and Ellery Roberts stopped by Jermaine Holden. Notre Dame was ready for the run that time and stopped him for a loss on the play. Stanford at the 39 of Notre Dame. 
Benstrom in the flat, incomplete, intended for Milburn, covered by DeBose. And that's what the Irish linebacker does so well, cover backs coming out of the backfield. The catch, he catches, he's just a terrific athlete. Stonehouse with his punt, his second of the day, tries to angle it out of bounds, gets a great bounce, and Stanford will down it deep in Irish territory. They'll mark it at about the Notre Dame three as Stonehouse, a little pooch punt, and it goes out of bounds deep in Notre Dame territory. They'll mark it. Higher from the end zone, Brooks dropped it. So this latter half of the first quarter at Stanford winning the field position battle. Notre Dame must punt from its own end zone. Ready, watch after Brooks drops the ball. Well, I tell you, that's one of those situations. You're going to get hit anyway. Man. You might as well catch it. That was that was the theory that got me through many a crossing route. John Lynch making people pay for coming into his territory. Good sailing punt by Hendrick. Milburn backpedals all the way to his 34-yard line. Melbourne up the middle, cuts to the outside, and is finally tripped up at the Irish 39-yard line by Jerome Bettis. What a return by Milburn, 27 yards after a Hendricks punt, sailed 61. Milburn, who has over 1,700 career rushing yards. We visited with him on the Stanford campus earlier this week, and he told us that he began his college career at Oklahoma because he was comfortable in Norman. He had gone to some summer camps there, but... After the recruiting wore off, he realized that Stanford was the place he should be. Play action pass. Stenstrom found the open man. He pays for it. A clothesline on Milburn, but he held on to the football as Carter nearly took his head off. Elon Carter with a big hit. Last two minutes of the opening quarter. Irish trying to protect that 9 nothing lead. Reverse. The give is to Calamese. Calamese, one of the quicker wide receivers on the end around, has a first down before he's banged out of bounds at the 19-yard line by DuBose and Burris. First down, Cardinal. Stenstrom, delayed handoff to Lashley. And the ball loose. Notre Dame has it. Demetrius DuBose, who forced the earlier turnover, knocks the ball loose this time, and Notre Dame recovers. Tom, that's exactly what I've been talking about with Bill Walsh's offense. I'm sure he's as confused as everybody else, but this Stanford offense has just continued to beat itself. Here they had a beautiful drive going down the field. You've seen them lay the ball on the ground now a couple of times, make some misreads on pass routes. This is a team that has not quite gotten a hold of this offense. There's DeBose, 31, stripping the ball, and Jermaine Holden cradles it for the turnover. First down play on the ground. It's Lee Becton into the game, replacing Brooks, who has stopped for a short game. Let's see if this test of the Stanford composure will hold up. There's Lynch, the free safety, who's leaving the game. Tommy, actually a loss on that first carry. Draw play, Becton. Becton tackles short of the 20-yard line. Howard, Notre Dame rushing attack. Meyer rolling to pass. On the money and complete to Gerald. Adrian Gerald has an Irish first down. Out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Not four games of the season. The opening series of the game has been the story so far. We've played a quarter at Notre Dame with the Irish up 9-0. In the Notre Dame tradition of excellence, a tribute to the legendary athletic accomplishment, the athletic department of the University of Notre Dame is proud to present its exclusive collection of sportswear and gift items, merchandise of the highest quality designed and available on a limited basis exclusively to the University of Notre Dame Department of Athletics. Call 1-800-345-5027 to receive a free catalog. Take one and... 
action. Hey, what's the best thing about breakfast at McDonald's? Coffee. Pour it out of the cup. It's steaming. It's dark and rich. I pour it personally. Coffee fresh? Fresh brew. Fantastic cup of coffee. So what's the secret? Arabica. Oh, <laughs> what's an Arabica? Arabica beans. Oh, the beans. And what else? It's always fresh. It just tastes good. And they like to come in and talk with each other and just like uh, the small coffee shop long ago. How much a coffee refill? They're free. What you want is what you get. It's guaranteed. Want some? Yeah. <laughs> The Bills, with Machine Gun Jim Kelly and the electrifying Thurman Thomas, Buffalo's offense has scored the most points in the NFL. The Dolphins, their feared passing attack can light up the scoreboard as well. It's Kelly versus Marino in a battle of undefeated Sunday. Dolphins. Counterplay, Brooks. inside the 40-yard line of the Cardinal by Ron George. 29-yard run by Reggie Brooks, who has been brilliant so far in this young season. You see the doctors checking him out. He missed the tackle on that long run, Tom. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but Tom Homo, the defensive coach, told me he was critical to the Stanford defense. And when you consider the complexity of that defense, the free safety is the man who has to come up and stick Bittis and Brooks, worry about the pass, then worry about the option, and then the pass off the option. So this is a critical injury for Stanford. Thomas Connect has replaced Lynch. Here's Brooks doing his thing again. Got free, tripped up at the 30-yard line by Connect. So far today. Pitch to Becton. Becton, what a move of his own. He's down to the 14-yard line. Lee Becton, who is Brooks' backup, not to be outdone, takes it for 16 yards. He has experienced dizziness and is still out of the game. Bettis passing off tacklers, punishing those defenders. To the six-yard line, Darian Gordon finally got him down. Only one pass so far. The Irish have it third and a yard from the Stanford five. Brooks, Becton, and Bettis in the backfield. And that should be an Irish first down. People, if you spread them out, just get them out of there and give your running back some room to run. Burris, Bettis, Brooks in the backfield. Pitch it to Burris. He's got a touchdown. The safety scores a touchdown on the pitch. Jeff Burris. drive by the Irish. They get that running game going. 85 yards. Burris scores to make it 16-0. Play action pass from Stenstra. Goes deep down the sideline. He's got a man wide open. It's Armour who can't hold on. Covington was closing the ground, but that's a catch Armour should have made. That could have been six for the Cardinals. Stenstrom looking over the nickel defense. That one dropped by Wet Knight, the tight end. Pretty tough hit. Knocked the ball loose by John Covington. Here's Notre Dame on a first down pass. Meyer has him wide open. That's Griggs. Griggs with a move. Ball's loose. And Stanford has it. Stanford recovers the fumble. They're bringing it back the other way. Twisting and turning is Darian Gordon. They knocked the ball loose from Griggs. Territory. Well, for some reason, Vaughn Bryant just completely dropped his coverage of Ray Griggs. Now you'll see at the very end of the play, Griggs with the fumble. And here we go the other way. Darian Gordon with a nice heads-up play. I tell you, that's the kind of plays that can get you back in a football game. Down 16-0. And it looked like all the momentum on the side of the Fighting Irish. Make the over, and Stenson looks across the middle and a tough catch made by Mike Cook or Justin Armour. It was Armour that didn't make the wide open catch a minute ago. Caught it in traffic for 18 yards. So American candidate and he has not had much of a chance so far this afternoon. He's on a wing left and gets it on the end around with blockers in front. Milburn cuts up and scores. Maybe that's simple reverse this is what you have to do against Notre Dame you can't try and just 
beat them up and down the field. You're going to have to try and go outside, make them run from sideline to sideline. This will be Armour with a pass. The former quarterback throws it in a crowd incomplete. Pass intended for Tony Klein, one of the tight ends from Armour, who is a wide receiver but a high school quarterback. And the two-point conversion attempt goes awry. Again, out of Naperville, Illinois, not far from home. Fires pass. Again, is incomplete, intended for tight end Irv Smith. And Rick Meyer now has hit only four of 14 passes today. Garnett and Whitman on the coverage as Meyer shakes his head after yet another incompletion. It has not been a good day passing. Kendrick to punt. Lynn Milburn lets it bounce. And it will bound out of bounds at about the 43-yard line of Stanford. Only a 37-yard punt by Hendrick, who told us he both place kicks and punts, but that he probably was more consistent putting the football than he was place kicking. He first down for Stanford with New Life, converting the turnover into some points. There's a pass drilled in and complete to Cook. 80 yards. Bill Walsh saying that his entire offense is in at Stanford, the same offense he used with the 49ers. Ellery Roberts straight ahead, close to the first down. And he said, Nice job. Baked to Milburn, Stenson's in trouble, and he's tripped up by Flanagan. Flanagan and Hamilton were all over Stenstrom that time. And there's 44, Jim Flanagan. Flanagan's brother Brian is a high school senior being recruited by Notre Dame. Stenstrom is sacked. McGill wrestles Stenstrom down with a big defensive play for the Irish. John Lynch, the outstanding safety of Stanford back on the field as Brooks bursts free. Reggie Brooks. Ripping off yardage and chunks is across the 35-yard line for a gain of 17. And at Notre Dame, there's an option play. Meyer pitches to Brooks. Brooks surrounded and hauled down after a gain of three by John Lynch. You see how valuable Lynch is. And third and three, the option to the other side. Becton has the carry and the first down. Stopped at the 49-yard line, just tripped up there by John Lynch, who made the tackle on the left side of the defense a moment ago. Now goes to the right side to trip up Becton. Changing the play here, and he fumbles the snap. And a flag down as one of the Stanford players perhaps piled on after the play had been whistled dead. That would be a costly mental error by the Cardinal here in the closing minutes of the first half. Dead ball, personal foul. <laughs> And that's what it is. John Soffy, the referee from the Big East, part of this split Big East Pac-10 crew with the move it on down to try and pick up. Oops. Meyer with a quick pass before Pollard, the intended receiver, had even turned around. In fact, Pollard was well on his way to getting behind the defense if Meyer could have waited a couple of counts. Well, their timing has been off all day. Four of 16. One of the deceiving parts about those numbers, though, is that three of the completions were on key third down situations that this far. There's Dawson on the sideline on this key third down play. Meyer steps up and walks for the end zone. Johnson couldn't hold on. Dawson would normally be the man they look for. He's not in the game. Meyer rolls right, throws left for the end zone. Incomplete intended for Adrian Gerald. Second down play with 51 seconds left. Notre Dame leading by 10 points. Well, Lastly dropped another. Quickly called plays. They're both dropped. Now it's third down. They're going to run it to Milburn. Milburn following his blockers. Ducks to the outside. Finally is tackled at the 46-yard line. That'll be a Stanford first down. Jeff Burris finally cutting the legs from beneath Glenn Milburn. It's Stanford University, but he should have gotten out of bounds there. Two timeouts remaining for the Cardinals. Stenstrom is sacked for the fourth time today. This time it's Bryant Young that gets the Stanford quarterback, and Walsh will take the timeout. Stenstrom completes it. No. Nope. Attempted lateral back to Milburn, and has Notre Dame recovered the fumble? Will it be a complete pass and a fumble? Let's wait for the ruling. 
down if they consider it a completed pass. It's a legal forward pass. We have a completed catch first. Then we have an illegal forward pass with a five-yard penalty, and it'll be lost to down, okay? And now what about where here do they say that this isn't a fumble? How is that not a fumble? Why did the clock, why did the play end before the lateral? That just doesn't make any sense. Here the play is still, it's clearly still going. That's a fumble. The play doesn't end with the forward lateral. That doesn't stop the play. I think the officials have just flat out blown this one. That Third and 17 for Sanford. Play it safe with a handoff to Milburn. Twists his way to the 47-yard line of Notre Dame as the clock to five seconds. Now four as Walsh uses his final timeout. Defense, this will be the final action of the half. And Stenstrom trying for the end zone is going to come up short. Almost tapped, but it wouldn't have made any difference because that was going to be the last play of the half regardless. Put in there only six points, and Bill Walsh is with John Dockery. Coach, if you were back in the role of TV analyst, what would you say about the first half? Well, uh, we're out. Stanford's outmanned, no question about that. They're outgunned, but the effort level of Stanford is excellent. And Stanford's mishandling the ball. We had four or five occasions we fumbled or dropped passes, and you can't do that against a superior team. Any uh, modifications, adjustments, jumping your head at the net right no, now? No, we know they're going to run it down our throat in the second half. We're just going to have to catch the ball and hold on to it. Thanks, Coach. All right, John, a pretty uh, concise and accurate analysis from the former broadcaster Bill Walsh, who finds his Cardinal team trailing by 10 at 16-6 at halftime here at Notre Dame. Let's this isn't your typical car commercial. There's no beautiful scenery, no winding roads. Hey, there's not even a car. But there is news. Geo is lowering prices on the Metro Coupe, sedan, and the XFI. So now the car that gets the highest gas mileage in America also has one of the lowest prices, which is pretty beautiful, even without pictures. Get to know Geo Metro at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Stop punching machine. This former champion's tough trail back now goes through his opponent's hometown. Jesse James Leha, one of the best prospects in the ring today. Dorsey battles Leha. Two tough Texans in a Lone Star Showdown today on NBC. All right, Tom, the Georgia Bulldogs making their first trip ever to the state of Arkansas for a football game. In the second quarter, tailback Garrison Hurst, already having a spectacular year, gets his 10th touchdown of the season. That made it 10-0 Georgia, and Arkansas field goal has narrowed it to 10-3. All right, Tom, in Charleston, West Virginia, Boston College, already with its best start in eight years, looks to go 5-0 for the first time in 38 years. First possession, second half, 18-yard Chucky Dukes touchdown run puts the Eagles on top of the Mountaineers, 17 to 14. Tom Hammond. Tom, let's go back to Morgantown, West Virginia for another look at future Notre Dame opponent, Boston College. After a West Virginia field goal tied it at 17, that Dwight Shirley seven yard run has put BC back on top 24-17. They are in the fourth quarter. And in Atlanta, North Carolina State leads 13-10 over Georgia Tech in the third, but the Wolfpack have lost quarterback Terry Jordan, who had completed 41 of 49 passes before spraining a foot. I'll take you on another trip to Morgantown, West Virginia, where West Virginia has struck back Adrian Morrell, leading rusher in the Big East with a 34-yard run here, well over 100 yards for the game, second TD of the day, ties it up at 24 apiece. They played a 31-24 game last year, won by West Virginia. All right, Tom, let's take you to College Station, Texas, where the fifth-ranked Aggies are in trouble against Texas Tech. This was early in the fourth quarter, a 22-yard touchdown run by Rodney Thomas that put A&M ahead 16-10. But the PAT hit the upright, and moments ago, Texas Tech got a 30-yard field goal from John Davis to go back on top 17-16. All right, Tom and Chris, take a look at what happened in the Orange Bowl. Remember Jerry Thomas's last second field goal miss for Florida State a year ago? Deja vu, Dan Mowry misses from 39 yards on the last play of the game. Preserve 
All right, Tom, let's take you to the moment of truth in College Station, Texas. Terry Venetulius, having missed a short field goal and the point after touchdown in the fourth quarter, kicks this game-winning field goal on the last play to keep A&M unbeaten, 19-17 over Texas Tech. Tom and Chris. Let's go to Madison, Wisconsin, Tom, where it's on Wisconsin for the Badgers and former Lou Holtz assistant Barry Alvarez. This short touchdown run by Brent Moss in the second half gave Wisconsin a lead. They got it to 20 to 10, gave up a touchdown, but held off a Buckeye rally and have beaten Ohio State for the sixth time in 12 years. Work your Chevy truck to the bone, and what does it get you? Stood the bowling, sweating in the sun. Felt like a million, felt like number one, like a rock. It gets you the best resale value of any full-size truck in the business. The best. Like a rock. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Oh, like a RCA 52-inch projection screen home theater. It's bigger and brighter than almost anything out there. Karch Karai puts his title on the line as the best meet the best. Who is the Old Spice King of the Beach? Find out next Saturday on NBC Sports. Half stats. You see the Notre Dame rushing for 143 yards and 232 yards of total offense. That's more than Stanford normally allows in an entire game. But really, the key in the first half was Stanford's ability to hold Rick Meyer and Notre Dame to just 89 yards in the air. They've had some success running the football. Passes incomplete on his last seven attempts. Here's a pitch to Bettis to open the second half. Bettis fumbles and Stanford recovers. John Lynch, the man we've been talking about all day, was the man that shook the football loose. And there's Lynch number 17. What a ball game that John Lynch is having. This young man, when you take on a 250-pound fullback like that and can knock him backwards and cause a fumble, that is just outstanding play. I tell you, we're seeing John Lynch make a big move for all Pac-10 honors here today. Some key plays. Now Stanford tries to take advantage of it. Stenstrom's pass complete. First down strike to Mike Cook. Covered by Greg Lane. Knocked out of bounds. 43 0 in the third quarter. Milburn bounces to the outside, has the first down. Inside the 10, down to the 8 yard line of the Irish, where he's hit by Tom Carter. First and goal for the Cardinal. Stenstrom. The pass complete for the touchdown. Justin Armour with the reception, and Stanford converts the Notre Dame football. Fumbled into the deep territory for another six points. That's 12 points now. Stanford has scored off Notre Dame turnovers. So Stenstrom to Armour for the Stanford touchdown, and the score now 16-13. You'll see Justin Armour right here on your screen is in man-to-man -man coverage with Tom Carter. Tom Carter's trying to disguise his coverage to make it look like a zone, but you'll see Armour weave his way through, and Carter's going to run into his own men on the field. And that resulted in a touchdown. Nice throw by Steve Stenstrom. It took only three plays to convert the Bettis fumble into six points. The extra point made it a three-point game. Brooks. There's John Lynch again. Lynch is the man that grabs... Reggie Brooks and hauls him down. What a game John Lynch is having. This is a Lake Dawson type play. He's in the game wide right. Meyer low looks left and delivers it to Griggs. Griggs knocked back. He will be close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be across the 30, and that will be a Notre Dame first down. Under a spot. Notre Dame first down. Here's a play action pass. Meyer has Irv Smith wide open. And Smith tight ropes down the sideline for another Irish first down to the 44 yard line where he's knocked out by Coy Gibbs. On the list of top Irish receivers. Fake to 
Brooks. Meyer sacked. Rick Meyer taken down all the way back to the 35-yard line as Stanford comes up with the first sack of the day. You have to be careful if you're Notre Dame here. You only have the three-point lead to work with. Don't want the turnover deep in your own zone. Stanford shows blitz, and they come. It leaves Bettis wide open. Bettis bounces off tacklers and has the first down, spinning, fumbles the ball, and Stanford recovers. Bettis fumbles for the second time this quarter, and Vaughn Bryant recovers for Stanford. And lose his sense of where he is, and you'll see from the backside, he'll get hit. He just completely lost track of the defense. That was Darian Gordon coming up and putting his hat right on the ball. Vaughn Bryant falling on it. Another big play by this Stanford defense. Bettis twisting and turning, trying to get more yardage. You see Jerome Bettis. He's a very competitive young man. And boy, when you lay two of them on the ground in a row in a close football game like this, that is a painful situation. But on the defensive side for Notre Dame now. Stenstrom finds his target, Cook. And Cook into Irish territory, a first down at the Notre Dame 45-yard line. Rick Meyer now 8 of 24 passing on the day. Draw play. Stanford not cool. Tyrone Parker with a big defensive play for the Cardinals. Parker with a first down play from their own 34. Stenstrom will scramble and takes another hard hit from Anthony Peterson and Brian Young. He was very concerned about that this afternoon. Meyer, in fact, missed most of practice Tuesday and Thursday. Stenstrom with a third down pass. And a great catch by Wet Knight. Ryan Wet Knight at midfield with Greg Lane all over him. Nice catch by Wet Knight, the senior from Fresno, who managed to hold on. Milburn bounces off tacklers, then is surrounded and taken down for a loss. Devon McDonald led the charge. McDonald's twin brother, Ricardo, an honorable mention All-American at Pitt, now playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. And with the shutout over Purdue a week ago. Stenstrom's pass is complete. Short of the 40-yard line. It'll be close to a first down, perhaps not quite enough. And Bill Walsh may have a decision to make here on fourth down. At John Lynch 
Lynch, the free safety of the Stanford Cardinal, has had an outstanding game. John, we've been talking about the distinctive play of free safety John Lynch for Stanford. Well, he has another distinction. You see his baseball cap from the Florida Marlins, an expansion club in Major League Baseball, is in the Hall of Fame of baseball. He signed as a number two draft choice last year, had the distinction of pitching the first game ever for the organization. They sent his cap to Cooperstown, and that's where it is. John Lynch, a very special player. Doc, based on his minor league record this summer and the game he's playing here today, though I predict a football future for John Lynch. And the football. Looks like he's trying to go back to that now. Meyer is going to be sacked. Second sack of the day by the Stanford defense, and it was Ron George, their All-American outside linebacker, that was all over Rick Meyer before he could even turn around. The defenders look on. Drills this one. He's had problems all day with accuracy, but that one was absolutely perfect to Lake Dawson. He did a nice job with his concentration. Now it's third and four. Option play. Meyer stopped in his tracks for a loss. Back to the 49-yard line. Esteban Avila, the senior defensive end. This is a big penalty. Stead ball, personal foul, defense. See if we can pick this up. Well, two now, players I tell, you what, wire, but they were I tell you what, if that is the call, somebody please tell me that that's not the call because those two players that fell on top of the pile, they were pushed on top of Rick Meyer. Bill Walsh has every right to be upset about that one. Camper wanted to do, show some movement up there in that front seven, and they've had success with it. Meyer across the middle at best. With a head of steam, Jerome Bass has an Irish first down. There's a... Another personal foul on Stanford. Ron George with a blow to the helmet of Rick Meyer. And the Cardinal coming unraveled a bit here. As you're driving, we'll be back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. There's only one way I know how to drive. Straight. If you've been drinking, pick someone else to do the driving. A message from Budweiser. More than a million of you have gotten to know Geo, the most successful new line of cars and trucks ever introduced. Get to know Geo at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Getting to know. In developing a completely new car, the possibilities are endless. At Geo, we brought all the pieces together beautifully. The newest Geo, Geo Prism, coming soon to your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Tonight, a young boy's secret passion is exposed. You're the one taking ballet. And Malcolm Jamal Warner is leaping to the rescue on Here and Now. <laughs> then, on Out All Night, the guy who never grew up has become a role model. Can I be your little brother? I think I'm gonna cry! NBC Comedy Tonight. Steve Martin. What a great day! Rick Moranis. Stay out of trouble. The network television premiere. By Blue Heaven, NBC Sunday. Last Sunday, the Seattle Kingdom. Miami down by five. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Third and nine. Dan Marino hits Fred Banks for the game-winning touchdown. A routine Marino come from behind victory? Hardly. O.J. has the story of a TD pass unlike any other. Sunday on NFL Live. Meyer fakes and now runs that option that you called, Chris. And Meyer tripped up, falls to the nine-yard line as Stanford defends the option very well that time. He's Meyer's key receiver. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Meyer goes the other way, and it's intercepted in the end zone. John Lynch, who else? Runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line. He's having the game of a lifetime. End zone. Rick Meyer may be playing his worst game as a college quarterback. <laughs> 
simply was not there. John Lynch had that one read all the way. There's no harm in throwing that football away if you're Rick Meyer. Go ahead, allow the field goal team to come on and put your team within one. yard line of the Cardinal. Stenstra steps up, completes the short pass to Ellery Roberts. Surrounded and taken down at the 30-yard line after a gain of six with the... Roberts has the first down. Hurdling would-be tacklers is J.J. Lashley. He has about uh, six or seven yards before he's covered by Demetrius DeBose. Second in America in all-purpose yards has been held to only 42 rushing today. From against Syracuse to come back and lose to Wisconsin. Third and one. Milburn to the outside. Puts on a beautiful move. Still on his feet. Glenn Milburn inside the Irish 40. Determined run before he's tackled by Jeff Burris. One of the finest runs of the game. For you, told you earlier, you're averaging 210 yards per game in total offense. And he just simply refuses to go down. He's not a big guy either. About 5'8", 5'9", 175 pounds or so. But he has a big heart. Look, 10, 39, Stanford up four. Dextra completes it to Cook. Cook may be hurt, or maybe that's just a cramp as he tries to stretch it out. Eighth play of the drive here. Milburn shakes one tackler and has a first down. Milburn was hit short of first down territory. Somehow managed to wiggle free to get the first down. Milburn just refusing to go down. Well, you really like to see that in a smaller player. McDonough and Jeff Burris, too much time to break on the football. Stenstrom got away with one there. First quarter. Nickel defense for the Irish. Milburn has a hole. He's going to be stopped short of the first down. He's shy of the 20-yard line. It'll be fourth down for Stanford. Yeah. Diego from 37 yards. A 37-yard field goal, and the Stanford lead now goes to seven. There's the kick. It's Stanford 23, Notre Dame 16. Cut off the run in the second half effectively. Only 10 yards rushing for Notre Dame's second half. Off the hands of Brooks and incomplete. And once again, Meyer not on target with his pass. him on first down. Ooh. The ball and Lane arrive simultaneously. It's surprising that Milburn was able to hang on to the football. Milburn. Tom Carter went in to make the tackle. Milburn gets to the 30-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be third and nine coming up. And yeah, pretty tough time. Six-yard run by the All-American Glenn Milburn. Only Jeff Burris saved a touchdown. Staying behind the block of Brian Cassidy. He's going to lead the way. You'll see Milburn follow him this time. The last time he cut it up too soon. This time he allowed Cassidy to make the block, and off he goes. One year ago, Bill Walsh was sitting in this booth as a commentator for NBC, commenting on the Notre Dame home games. A tremendous upset. This could be the game. Wide open in the catch made by Whitnight. Whitnight inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Tracked down by Jeff Burris, but not until he bit off 21 yards. After Steve Stenstrom and simply could not get there. This was a full blitz, man-to-man -man coverage down the field, and you see Wet Knight come wide open. That play could never happen that way without the offensive line doing their job. Controlling on the clock. Lastly, he's to the 15-yard line. That's a three-yard gain. Anthony, and right now Walsh with the upper hand. 
Clay Cott was down to two before they handed to Milburn. When Milburn, he's got a touchdown! You see Dolman, he's going to lead. Milburn swings around, and Milburn is just doing a great job of following his blocking. That time it's Dolman on the corner, one-on-one -on -one with the Tom Carter. Boom, kicks him out. And Milburn with the clincher. Now Abrams with the extra point. And the stack 16. Glenn Milburn. How you doing, Paul? He could win the Heisman. How you doing, Coach Coop? No, no, Instead of his college coaching career, anyway. Kickoff taken out of the end zone. And they'll try to pass it back, and that could be intercepted, is it? Yes, Stanford has it back. What else can go wrong for the Irish? Do you think come up with a gimmick play, throw it over this way, but Stanford seems to be in the right place all the time anymore. <laughs> you know, they just have been making plays like that all day long. This, but from Lou Holtz's standpoint, he had to try something. He, had, he needed two touchdowns in the final minute. Maybe a gimmick play breaks for the distance, gives you a chance. Shot at first place in the polls and ending their chances for a national championship. And it was turnovers that proved the undoing of the Irish that day as well. Held to 153 by Fred Van Appen, the defensive coordinator of Stanford today. There's a fumble by Milburn. Ball ruled down. No fumble, even though Notre Dame came out of the pack with it. Things I can think of about college football. That goes to both Notre Dame and Stanford. Roberts stopped just short of the goal line. Abrams with an 18-yard field goal attempt. And it's good as the Cardinal add insult to injury and up their lead over Notre Dame to 33-16. Trailed 16-0. Miller's going to come out of there with it. Maybe he's got a good choice. Miller, the speedster, with the angle, he's knocked out of bounds finally, but a good return by Mike Miller. 57-yard return, says Mr. Stats, Elliot Cowb. Meyer, tackled. Tried to pass, was flushed from the pocket, and now approaching two minutes. Because the kicker for Notre Dame asked us to pass along best wishes to Kevin Pendergast, the backup kicker's mom. She's in a hospital, and certainly our best wishes to you as you watch the ball game. And Todd Norman's brother, Tom, a senior defensive end in California. Stanford, uh, Fred Von Appen. What a job they've done. Shutting down the first and second down plays. Dawson pays the price after he makes that catch. And the first down reception will stop the clock at a minute 39. Five-yard line of Stanford. Batted down. Sticky defense again by the Cardinal units. Mention that, today's Chevrolet player of the game, John Lynch of Stanford. In conjunction with this program, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students. They may continue their education. What a game Lynch had. Back Lynch with that key interception in the end zone for Stanford. Where it must sat on the football. Even when they had the lead, they kept attacking. This will be the 38th pass attempted by Meyer. That's a new career high for him. And he is one and five in passes in games where he's thrown this many passes. The number is 28, that or more, and he's one only once. And here is the traditional post-game handshake. Walsh and Holtz with a moment in the center of the field. Congratulations. Uh, we need to start over again. What are your emotions right now? This is a fantastic... It's one of the biggest wins in my life. And this includes Super Bowls. Going to Notre Dame and winning out. Going to Notre Dame and winning. It's just a fantastic uh, tribute to our football players who are outgunned all the way. And we outplayed Notre Dame in South Bend. It's just a marvelous feeling. Coach, you told me at the beginning of this week you were afraid your team would be outmanned by Notre Dame. But after being down by 10 at the half, 
you manhandled the Irish. What was the turnaround? Just our defense is a lot better than people think. They play great defense. Glenn Milburn was outstanding. Our entire team, a great victory for Stanford. Thank you. Congratulations.